Hey guys, welcome to game two of BSL Season 14 Hasu League Group B. We got Kiko going up against Doodle, upper right hand corner. Kiko starting as the blue Protoss. Blue Protoss? I thought Kiko was Terran. Bottom, sorry, there we go. My, that's why. <laughs> Bottom left hand corner, we have Kiko starting as the blue Terran, upper right hand corner. It's because of the shininess. That's the uh, yellow, but beta art uh, Protoss. It's hard to tell that that's yellow, yeah? I guess I'll have to... Anyway, trust me, that's yellow. <laughs> uh, Doodle. Doodle actually... So Doodle and Machine re have recently played in Gosu League. Now they are in Hasu League, and I don't think that is because of them dropping in skill level. I think it is because of the raising MMR in BSL across the board. But knowing that they are Go previous Gosu League participants, I think that makes them strong favorites. Trying to think of anybody else that's been in Gosu League recently that's in this bracket. But point being, the MMR of all of these guys across the board is fairly high. They are strong players, which is another reason I'm really hyped for this season. Doodle scouting after Pylon, which can be super annoying because you can go ahead you can get a lot of disruption. I think he wants that gas steal. It's very, very common on Eclipse. And oftentimes Terran just don't even bother to try to prevent it. Uh, often, I, I've seen one solution being just going for that fast expansion, just going one one gate into, well, just going as rapidly in expansion, just ignoring that and grabbing your gas out of your natural. I actually thought it was really clever in BS, or not BSL, in ASL a couple seasons, and trying to remember the player who did it, maybe it was Light, who when he got the gas deal, he threw a bunch of SCVs inside gas early so that as soon as the second command center finished, he could have enough gas to very rapidly get that factory up. I hadn't thought about that as a strategy before. Uh, it was kind of clever to see that. Though I'm sure that looks like he does want to go, f at least for this gas, he's kind of hammering away. It looks like we're going to see a 13 Nexus from Doodle. So Doodle, I think, recognizing that, okay, I got the gas. And that's really frustrating to deal with, I think, as a Terran player. Also, look at that, the the uh, taunting gas. It's like, ha, ha, ha. Now it almost looks like one of those things where the SCV is trying to chase the probe to get the gas. A little bit of damage. Ooh, took the probe scout out. So Kiko building kind of the anti-zealot wall along this mid vector, but also able to get a really early kill. Although his, unfortunately in another situation, this would have potentially opened up room for a lot of build order shifts. But because of that gas steal, it uh, doesn't really do a lot. It doesn't really put Doodle in the dark. Doodle. SCV scouting everything. Looks like that SCV going to go ahead and try to do damage now. Gateway and Forge behind this for Doodle to be a little bit more defensive. Sending another probe scout out. And it's a little unfortunate that, okay, it looks like that barracks has been reshifted and is now rebuilding. It's a little unfortunate we didn't get a Marine out first because I think with a Marine or two, we could Kiko potentially could have put Doodle in the dark. That might have forced a handful of cannons or two. Because I guess the one follow-up that was possible, that would have been hidden, is rather than plopping a command center, is dropping a bunch of barracks and going for a really quick uh, marine flood or something along those lines. Although I haven't seen that in quite some time. I don't think it's... Uh, it looks like that Probia actually getting boxed out of that natural expansion. So Doodle doesn't have that confirmed, but I think he's going to proceed assuming that it is a command center expansion build. A simulator warping in. Right now, Doodle with a little bit of a probe lead, and he's starting to move out. Well, holding that Zealot short, the SCV checking out the number of Zealots that are coming out of the base, making sure that that Zealot wants to chase him rather than go towards the main. Kiko's starting to put that preventative bunker. I don't know that that, well, the bunker is important in this matchup, but I'm wondering if he could have waited a little while, uh, especially with that first Zealot popping out against the 12 Nexus and this the cybernetic score being so far off. Uh, but regardless, Kiko, sneaking in the build order, has three Marines inside that bunker on the base, does have his gas up and operational. It's gonna be, gonna delay that factory a little bit. I'm Pylon being planted at the nine o'clock location for Doodle. One, to delay that third potentially down the line, but also to have eyes on potential drops. Because oftentimes what happens when you open up a, an early Nexus build, it is up to Terran to oftentimes slow, Terran oftentimes wants to slow the, their, opponent's economy down to kind of swing back on this match. Two Zelts chasing down this SCV. Finally, a Dragoon being produced. This SCV looks like it's going to die inside this base. Second gas up rapidly. So two cannons, or sorry, one cannon out on the front as well, but Doodle suggests, yeah, that suggests to me that there's going to be a Reaver or potentially even a DT drop follow-up because what are you going to spend that gas on? 
We will see, though. Doodle wandering up finally. Going to take that SCV out. Well, maybe. SCV staying alive for a long time. I don't know that he got a good scout on the rest. I do like that this SCV from Kiko is moving out, going ahead and getting that information. He's plopping down two factories now and a machine shop. Maybe going to follow this up. We'll see if he goes Siege Tech first or if he's going to go for a Vulture Harass to follow this. He does have the opportunity with the Dragoon Count being a little bit lighter to potentially get some Vultures out there. He is going for an initial Siege Tank, but again, I want to see... So double Machine Shop, and I'm wondering if he's going to skip Siege Tech again to get the Vultures out on the map, provide additional bit of harassment. A Marine in that back corner potentially... Were, well, I don't think there's worry about Proxy that this SCV was out there to kind of scout that information, but two gateways and Observatory range being upgraded in the background both players moving up doodle does have he has managed to sneak an economic lead i think kiko's in a position though and actually no it's just going to be siege tank flood so we have the double machine shop to get more siege tanks here in the mid game this reminds me and no uh, unless it's being built right this second or being built hidden no armory as of yet so this reminds me oh, and there's the double upgrades there are the vulture upgrades so Kiko, with the two factories, putting himself in a position to potentially follow this up with what would... I think this feels like... I don't know. This is one of those things where I'm not a Terran player. I don't know the timings on this, but it feels like it would be a slow attack if he was opting to do so with the three siege tanks and the vultures and the mines as far as a follow-up. But it looks like this is going to... Yeah, this looks like it's going to be that attack. He's going to unload, move up with a slew of marines, three tanks... The probe is going to see it. So Doodle sees this army incoming. The Dragoon Count is pretty sizable. There are going to be three gateways worth of units to kind of push this out. The, the Observer also is going to help mitigate those. It's not going to uh, complete mitigation, but it's going to help against those mines. A Dragoon trying to get back to home base. It's going to delay these forces a little bit, but loses a lot of its army and maybe its life. Nope, actually looks like it's going to survive. But this is right as Doodle was going ahead and grabbing a third. He put that robotics facility. Uh, uh, robotics support bay at that location. Some mines being blocked from Pico, so it looks like this... I kind of like this build. Ooh, a mine drag almost going in to the army. It looks like he was being taken out last second by defensive forces, but going to use mines to blockade this location and delay the third this way. The observer, however, is going to open that up, but the high ground is going to be on Kiko's favor. Keep in mind, I don't think Siege Tech is finished yet. So Siege Check is a ways out, so it's going to be tanks having to engage on the high ground, and the tanks having trouble getting on the high ground to utilize that advantage. So this, I don't know that this is going to get taken out, that bunker being built. The Vultures delaying the Dragoons briefly, but the Dragoons are marching their way up. And their other question is, is how, long, how far away is a Reaver and a Shuttle to take this out? The bunker is very close to finishing. It looks like there might be four Marines to get in there. The Dragoons taking out their own pylon to march forward. And Doodle... The other problem is you can't target fire once the Marines are in the bunker. But this is enough Dragoons to push through. This is going to be close. Oh, the Dragoons taking out... So the Marines not focused firing the Nexus. So the Nexus... I'm not sure they would have been able to take it out otherwise. But it looks like Doodle holds. Really only loses a pylon and a cannon. Took out a lot of siege shanks. And that's going to force doodle into a more defensive position he's got a, a, a starport dropping the control tower but keep in mind this is going to chew into that plus one weapons timing so he's trying to get a command center to grab his third but to be honest as far as a follow-up he somehow got the scv the, the uh, worker count lead but i don't know how he is going to hold a third built a wraith interestingly enough so we'll see what the follow-up is. So three factories. The Reaver is out on the field someplace. There's the shuttle. So it's going to be two Reavers as well to potentially do a lot of harassment. But right now, Kiko's army is teeny. Doodle has three bases, all saturated, plus the gas. Getting shuttle speed, a bunch of Dragoons. And Kiko will be lucky if he doesn't get his two bases busted. He's going to have five siege shanks on defense more shortly does have the third base but i don't know how or the third command center but it's going to be a while before he's going to be able to take that third plus the observer is right on the front so this scv is going to go ahead and wander in to go see what the situation is but on top of that 
Doodle's gonna have... Well, I guess he's only got the three gateways. Didn't pre early build these gateways to kind of work with it. The Siege Tank's looking to engage. They got a huge shot from that Reaver, and their Dragoons are filing in. One Siege Tank down. The Mines are delaying things a little bit, but that's two Siege Tanks, three Siege Tanks. They got wiped out, and it's left two others a little bit soft. And Kiko, yeah, very much boxed in. That pylon still sitting there underneath all of this. And the Dragoons can easily march forward. That, yeah, that command center needs to get out of here. So this is wasted minerals on a missile turret. That SCV is going to get wiped out as well. Mines being planted preventatively on the front. Doodle now feeling very secure inside his three bases. Has a significant lead. And wow, he's going for a not just a tech switch to carriers because of the time. But he's going to three gate carrier. Feeling like he's got a strong enough economic lead to just do the full switch. And it's true, I don't think Pico's gonna have much room to do anything against this. Reavers, I'm not sure that's the best economic exchange. The, ooh, this Wraith is gonna be nice against the shuttle. The Dragoons running forward. It looks like one of them getting taken out. Kiko trying to do the slow movement. Expand. So. Keep in mind, this is a, in a fourth base being grabbed in the midst of this. So this is going to be four bases for Doodle. He does have the supply lead, a significant supply lead, but keep in mind, a lot of that supply is in carriers that are not fielded. Another Dragoon getting taken out at 12 o'clock. But he's blockading at the 9 o'clock. He's got more Dragoons to potentially do some harassment there. It looks like the SCV... Did the SCV get a kill? The SCV battle SCV managed to take the probe out at the 4th. That's more of just a momentarily, uh, a momentarily, a momentary delay. Five gateways out. Kiko going ahead and scanning to see what he can see. I don't think he saw the three stargates. And here's the, th yeah, as he's building this, okay, looks like he, he has recognized the tech switch. He is getting the Charon booster upgrade, but he's still very, very light on Goliath. Has his own drop shit up. Maybe to deal with something. It looks like some pylons gotten taken out, but these reavers are sufficient. That shuttle is not long for life, though. wonder if this is going to provoke a defensive response. And this Doodle being crazy aggressive now. Doodle's like, you can't do anything to me, so I'm going to expand here with these vultures as well. I'm going to clear out the south while taking a fifth base and building carriers behind this. Because what are you going to do? You still need to take your third. We'll see if that provokes... Like, honestly, I would expect a... a if I was Kiko, I'd just attack into that. Especially given the situation. Reaver is getting cleaned up by Wraith. However, the Wraith not long for life. Four bases established now. Four Doodle. But the drop making its way back into the main. A lot of probes. That's eight probe kills. And Vulture's also clearing out the natural expansion. The... Pro the economic swing is significant here. Doodle losing a lot of probes, but keep in mind, he's got several bases to replenish this, plus he's got the carriers out. So it looks like that sea shank. So if Kiko didn't know there were carriers before, he knows now. Does have the Goliaths. Has grabbed his third, but still no plus one weapons. And weapon upgrades are critical versus carriers. Double armory to try to rectify that. A rare situation where Protoss has the upgrade lead. Plus one weapons on the ground forces. The carrier is starting to move out with that attack force. Let's see if Doodle resaturates. He's continuing to build carriers out of this. In a really strong lead. The Vulture wandering up to see at least where that attack force is. Not yet saturated at the bottom right or at the 12 o'clock position. And it looks like, yeah, a lot of turrets, mines, etc. being planted out on the front. And shield upgrade, interesting. I've seen this one, once or twice. And I'm wondering what the, the if a Protoss player wants to comment on that, get in touch with me, because I want to know what the, the logic is now. Because it seems like it's not ju it is intentional, like an intentional shift to building that shield upgrade. Maybe it has to do with it hits all of the units when you're doing that air switch not sure what the logic is or if it was just a misclick still or maybe it's i'm so far ahead i'm just going to upgrade my shields turret think in the dragoons and zealots waiting on that corner the tanks are sieging up on the low ground the carriers dancing 
in between a lot of Dragoons getting wiped out, though, through some challenging control. Looks like there are sufficient Dragoons and not enough carriers that Kiko is able to push this back, but he's still way back in the supply lead now. Missed a drop of several Goliaths in the bottom right-hand corner. It looks like they were able to clear out the five probes that were here. So Kiko doing what he needs to do to stay in this match. So despite being down a lot of troops, although he sees Shanks getting wiped out, I think that might be it for the third. But he's been continually harassing these base. Somehow has an SCV lead. He just hasn't been able to saturate additional bases or have a sufficient ground army to stop Doodle. Doodle now completely breaching this 9 o'clock base. And that might be all she wrote right there. The command center not even, well, lifting off now, but getting wiped out. So Kiko, once again, down to two bases. That main is not long for life. The natural expansion, also very thin. So he's going to have to do it with a very small attack force that he's got on the ground. The Goliaths have been able to take out that Nexus in the bottom right-hand corner, but Doodle has Nexus, Nexus, Nexi to spare. And he's like, fine, I'll just expand to the upper left, even though there's a mine in the way, and it might take a minute. Near 200 supply. Well saturated across all these bases. The carrier fleet is looking strong. Reavers, he's just got a, he's got the late game army. And Kiko trying to expand away, hoping that Doodle doesn't scout this or barrel into it. But at this stage, Kiko's gonna have his work cut out for him. Does have level one weapons, level one armor, which will help. I'm wondering if the, uh, let's see if I can find a carrier here. Her? It's hard to... Okay, so plus one shield. It's hard to see the air upgrades until the interceptors come out. Got to select an interceptor in the air. And they're little tricky buggers to go ahead and select. I think Doodle now being a little bit more patient with this. He knows he has the economic lead. He knows he has the supply lead. Some Goliaths wandering out. Reaver's going to stop... Wow, and nothing to stop them. Okay, let's see if I can get a single interceptor to get you guys the... Uh, ah! There, I got it. Plus two weapons. So they're gonna so they're doing they're hitting hard. Now it looks like this base is this has got to be a cancel. The Goliaths have managed to pin in the carriers. Doodle evacuating. Looks like some turrets actually to be able to get on top of this as well. But yeah, there's the cancellation. I think that's gonna be the GG moment. The Goliaths trying to back out. SCV still trying to mine, and the rest of the attack force now approaching. 200 supply is there nearly for Doodle, and the tank's getting, yeah, that army was in retreat. This was one of those retreat, and then you're getting pincered from behind by Zealots and everything else. There's the GG from Kiko. So Kiko will move on to the loser's bracket, or the loser side, to take on Invisible Men. I had to think about it a second. We're going to see Doodle <laughs> taking on Rancor, which I think we've seen in the past. Should be a great one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.